Christians are the worst at doing this. Celebrating the good things that God is doing. Which is weird, right? I mean, aren't Christians supposed to be people that have a deep-seated sense of joy and peace? This is my happy face! Yet, so many times we find ourselves spiraling into a death trap of what's going wrong rather than what's right. We fight over secondary theology. We argue about politics. We build up walls of preference and difference that make divisions amongst us. And then we sit around and wonder why we're so discouraged in our walk with Jesus. That's why today I'm going to show you how to see the good even when things seem so bad on Church Door. So is this glass half empty or is this glass half full? People have been asking this silly question for ages. And my question for you is, how does your mind perceive this conundrum? In a psychological study conducted by Marty Siegelman, he took a group of elite swimmers, most who were training to be Olympians, and he had them swim their best event. Yet, there was a bit of a catch. After they swam their little hearts out, he intentionally told them that their performance was a few seconds slower than it actually was. Now, given the chance that they would swim once again, he observed that the optimists swam just as good or even better than their original time. And the pessimists performed substantially worse. Oh, you almost had it. You gotta be quicker than that. Even though the truth was they could do better. In the end, it was all about perspective. Now the Bible reminds us no matter who we are, it rains on both the just and the unjust, the pessimist and the optimist. So as Christians, how do we face the reality of life in a severely broken world without being overly pessimistic in our outlook? That's why I'm calling today's message how to see the good even when things seem so bad. Now I can hear the groaning of all the seasoned pessimists out there thinking, Oh brother, this guy stinks! Yeah right, I've tried to will away my pessimism before, but it just doesn't work. But believe me, what we find in the scriptures is way less about willpower or trying to whitewash reality and it's much more about intentional recognition of God's miracle working power displayed to us. Come on, Ian, I've never seen a miracle before. Well, have you put yourself in a position to experience miracles? In Joshua chapter three, after 40 years of bad luck, of wandering in a desert, God's people now found themselves on the cusp of a great miracle. God was going to give them a land that he had promised to them many generations earlier. So he asked them to pack up their camp and get ready to move. And as you can imagine, this was a logistical nightmare, a real glass half empty situation with over two and a half million men, women, and children. All their belongings, all their food, their place of worship was now supposed to move across an overflowing Jordan River into enemy territory. Enemy spotted. Then God asks this of them. Take the Ark of the Covenant, which was the representation of God's manifest presence to the people of Israel. And the priests carrying the Ark were to step into the edge of the river. Now, when God's people positioned themselves correctly, what happened was a miracle. The second Israel placed themselves fully before God, as he had asked, the water stopped flowing and the ground became completely dry so this whole nation could go across. So this is my first thought for you. If you're trying to see good in the midst of all the bad, make sure to place yourself where you can see God's work on display. 
Maybe the reason you're seeing the glass half empty is because you're not faithfully placing yourself before the Lord, actively seeking to experience His power in your life. Then as they were crossing and experiencing God's miracle for themselves, Joshua asked the nation of Israel to do this in Joshua 4.4. 4. He called together the 12 men he had appointed from Israel, and one from each tribe, and said to them, Go before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Now Joshua didn't want this miracle to fade from their memory so fast. So what did he ask of them? To build a memorial made from the rocks, actually from the bottom of the dry riverbed that they had just crossed. It's a rock. So here's my final thought. If you want to see the good in the midst of the bad, memorialize God's miracles when they happen and then revisit them often. If you're like me, I forget a lot which makes it all the more important to revisit the miracles of God displayed in our life. For me, this is actively telling people the stories of when I've seen God's hand at work in my life. Other people like to keep prayer journals. Some people like to get tattoos. Some carry items with them or have special jewelry to wear that all remind them of God's work in their life. The point is, Maybe it wouldn't be so hard to sink into pessimism if we celebrate what God has already done in our lives. Maybe you've never seen a river dry up before you, but you can start with the small things. Thank God for your family, your friends, and even as simple as the food that you eat tonight at your dinner table. These are all blessings and gifts from the Lord. And when we recognize that God is the one who graciously gives us all these things, it makes it a lot harder to dwell on all the bad things. But it all starts with positioning ourselves like Israel did, to see God's work on display in our lives. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ and you wanna do that for the very first time today, we have a full team of people here today that want to meet you where you're at. You can text prayer to the number you see coming up on the screen or you can hit us up in the comment section. We would love to help you take those steps. Do us a quick favor, help us promote great Christian content by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so that every single time you see a piece of content come out, it will come directly to you. Or you can go the extra mile by going to rivervalleyrockford.org slash give and making a donation there. Every single cent goes right back into helping people just like you take their next step with Jesus. Hey, thanks so much for coming to be with us here again today. Our prayer for you this week is as you go, you would take note of all the things that God is doing in your life, that you would celebrate his miracles and that he would lift your mind, your heart and soul above all of the bad that seems to happen around you. May you be blessed in your going. We can't wait to see you again here next week.